good morning. When the periodic inventory system is used, the cost of sales is not recorded after each transaction. Only at the end of the year, a calculation is done to determine the cost of sales. And no continuous record of inventories are kept during the year. You do not write in your inventory account during the year. Therefore, it is not necessary to work out what is the cost of sales figure after every transaction. The following information was obtained uh, from the financial records. The first in, first out method is used and they use the periodic inventory system. So if I look at the information provided, they give me opening inventory and then they give me the purchases. So I'm going to record all the purchases so that we can see what is our total purchases. And the first one is 30 units of 180 rand. Then there was returns of 10 units, so it means we re reduced the number of units and we reduced our purchase price. Then 190 units was purchased at 7 rand each and we record what was the total expense. And 25 units were purchased at 8 rand, 50 items were purchased at 10 rand, and 100 items were purchased at 11 rand. So I can add all these units together, and that means that the total number of units purchased during the year was 385 units. If I take all the amounts and I add it up, it means the total cost of the 385 units was 3,250. So my first step will be to determine how many units that we buy during the current year and what was the expense of all the units that was purchased during the year. The second step will be to determine how many units are available in your closing inventory? Remember that all the units that were purchased first will be sold first. That means that the units that's available at the end of the year will be those units that were purchased last. So if we look at our closing inventory and I take my opening inventory, there was 10 units when we started at the beginning of the period. We bought 385 units, and if we go and look how many units that we sell during the year, I add up the 40 units that were sold, plus 50 gives me 90, then there's 10 that was returned, so that's 80, plus 100 is 180, plus 70 is 250. So we've actually sold 250 units. So if I subtract it from the units that were available during the year, it means that the closing inventory consists of 145 units. Now the first ones, as we sold, we've sold all those opening um, balances that we had and every time when we bought it in the beginning of the year. Because all the old stock is sold, the ones that will be definitely left over is my last units that I bought. So that is 100 units at 1,100. I've got 145 units left over. So that means from this batch, I've got 45 units left over because the total must be 145. So from the second last batch, we've got 45 units that we pay 10 rand, and that gives me 450. So the total value of my closing inventory will be 1,550 rand. If we look at the statement of income that must be completed at the end of the year, I will look at the sales and say we've sold 40 units at 20 rand, 50 units at 20 rand, then the debtors return 10 units, so I'm a subtracted, then we sold another 100 units at 25, and we sold 70 units at 25. So the total value of my revenue, if I calculate all those figures, will give me 5850. 
My opening in inventory was given as 10 units at 4 rand each, so opening inventory was 40. We calculated that the total purchases for the year was 300,250 rand. So total purchases 3,250. So if I record that in my um, statement, it means that the purchases is 3,250. The closing inventory was calculated as 1,550. So I subtract the closing inventory of 1,550. And that means that the gross profit that we made in the current year was 4,110.